You ever wonder why people get so upset by men going their own way and what we represent? For example, on my most recent video entitled Intellectually Induced Asexuality, a slew of comments coming from men and women, one claiming I'm advocating androgyny, uh, some others saying I'm, you know, the usual generalizing. Don't generalize. Now, you could be puzzled as to why people care about, what are we, 0.000, 000 I mean, the possibly infinite zero, nigh infinite zeros of percentage of men. Why do people care that men, some men, specifically of my sort of uh, going your own way, have no interest in women per se? Hmm, I wonder why. Could it be the symbolism behind it? You know, in many private conversations with Barbarossa, I've discussed, just as a thought experiment, what the world would look like if basically men thought as stardust. I mean, uh, I'm, I suppose, in some respects, even more extreme than Barbarossa, because I just don't deal with women beyond the necessities. Uh, that is, I don't pursue them, I don't engage in sexual relations with them. But what if, what if a majority of men all of a sudden thought like stardust? Well, I think the world would turn topsy-turvy. Women would be puzzled. And more importantly, they would be very upset. Women would be very upset. And, of course, men who are always seeking to protect women, they need to reinforce what women want them to think and do. And so that's why you see these comments all the time coming from men talking about sausage fests or uh, accusations of homosexuality, in this case androgyny, and so on and so forth. Just imagine what the world would look like. Because in that world, women, quite literally, the vast majority of them would have almost nothing to offer men. Their pussies would no longer be the commodity, the overly inflated commodity they seek to sell. Their bodies would be pretty much worthless for the purposes of attracting men and getting things done for them based on their looks. All they would have left would be their mind, and most women's minds, as we know, not through any uh, necessary biological attribute, but by dint of uh, taking taking advantage of biological uh, innate we'll put it this way I don't believe that women are necessarily less intelligent than men are but through their biological advantages that they have as the fair sex as Esther Villa said many times they've allowed their minds to atrophy to the point where and I, I always find this line quite funny in the book, the Dedrasierter um, Mann, the manipulated man, she postulates that theoretically a woman, a hot, a woman could be hot, but also potentially as dumb as a chimpanzee and still get by. And I believe that on, to a certain extent. So they've allowed, they've allowed their advantage, their advantages, biologically speaking, in terms of looks, physical appearance to uh, basically run the show for them. But in this world, imagine this hypothesized world of stardust, uh, stardust view of women. Uh, they would only have their minds left, and there wouldn't be a whole lot there. Now, would there be? And people feel threatened by that. I think men, as well, feel threatened by this because it shows the shallowness on their part of worshipping a commodity that essentially, in reality, has so little value. Nice tits and ass. What value is that to the, to the world? How does that forward human knowledge? How does that increase our well-being as human beings, as a species? Great tits and ass, great fuck maybe. So what? See, when I'm saying that, I suppose on some level, I'm calling men out too. Hmm, I suppose. You know, recently I got a PM accusing me of uh, 
misanthropy. Hmm, I suppose I can play that game. I'm not a fan of nether apes. Nether ape is a term I have devised. I devised a long time ago, but I decided to introduce it into my videos. I use it in common parlance with friends. For people who just don't think, who just... Uh, you remember the autopilot function. They're running on autopilot. Men and women alike. I suppose there's something misanthropic to that, but the problem in the world is <laughs> quite simply a lack of thinking, uh, be it in men and women, although in the case of women, it, it's even more pronounced than it is in men. But for man, for man to be reminded that he's pursuing this commodity that really has no value beyond maybe a quick fuck, uh, it, it's, it's, I suppose, a bit alarming to them. That they're that they're they're reminded of this, uh, and once again, men will fight for the illusion and delusion as long as possible. Uh, it's quite incredible the the level, the energy they, they put into to defend uh, to defend women, and in defending women, accuse other men who've renounced women of well, all sorts of things, androgyny, asexuality, well, I said homosexuality, the sausage fest. So I think it's really, ultimately, at the end of the day, the symbolism. It's really the symbolism. It's not that MGTOW have any power. We don't. It's the same reason that certain people, uh, <laughs> whose name I won't mention, get so upset by uh, MGTOW. Is that it's the symbolism. It's a threat to their delusions. It's a threat to their illusions. It's a threat to their structured life, the life that they believe is uh, true in every respect. When you offer something up that opposes that in a philosophical sense, then I suppose that is a threat. But it's not a tangible threat. Not really. Like I said, we don't have the numbers. There will never be a, a, a group of men en masse who advocate what Stardust is advocating. That's just not going to happen. Uh, most men will live and die by the pussy. Th that's how most men operate. If people want to call me a misanthrope for that, feel free to do so. I don't care. You see, I reached the point in my making videos where I, I really, I'll make the videos, I w certainly want to help those who are willing to listen, but I'm, I'm making them uh, for those people and, and for myself. People can call me whatever name they want to. It doesn't, doesn't bother me and I find it amusing sometimes, but I really do think ultimately it's the symbolism. It's, it's, it's the symbolism. Even the symbolism of the so-called marriage strike. I mean, these are essentially men who uh, would have no pro problem being worker drones, or would have no problem if the uh, conditions were different. Well, okay, but that—that's a threat. That's a, that, there's a symbolism behind that. See, at the end of the day, the world needs men in a sense that it doesn't need women. It needs women for the time being because of their reproductive capacity. But it needs men's intellect. Uh, it needs men's la physical labor, mental labor, energy. And it needs men's desires. And so MGTOW, at least of the sort I advocate, is a much more cerebral approach to the world. It's a withdrawing from the world. And I think people feel threatened by that. Um, and people get really upset about it. Even, like I said, there's no tangible threat. I mean, I'm not going to affect any change in the world. I have no illusions about what I do here. I don't think anything's going to change. Anything. And people can call me whatever they want for as many times as they want, as long as they want. But, like I said, I do believe very strongly in presenting the truth. I don't care how discomforting it is, whether people get depressed by it, whether it makes them utterly miserable or happy or whatever. I don't care about any of that. The only thing I care about is what is true, as far as I understand it to be. And beyond that, I care not. So 
if I put out a perspective that people don't like and it depresses them, quite frankly, I don't care. I'm not here to make anyone happy. I'm not even here to make myself happy. I'm here to understand. And I would hope that my subscribers are also here to understand rather than to pursue some ethereal, effete notion of happiness, uh, which quite frankly is akin to the whole notion of romantic love. It has about as much substance as water vapor does, although theoretically water vapor has a lot more substance than that. Still, think about the symbolism of men going their own way. Think about what that entails, particularly my brand. People don't like hearing it. Even men don't like hearing it. Even men going their own way don't like hearing it. You know how many PMs I get uh, constantly? That's why I'm talking about this, but going on about how you know my message is depressing and uh, I need to offer men more hope. I'm not here to offer you hope. If you want hope, you can believe in Jeebus. I'm here to tell you the truth. Whether it makes you happy or not, whether it depresses you or not, I don't care. However, if you seek understanding, I do care. That's how I roll. Anyway, take care. Think about the symbolism. Have a good night.